Hello everyone, welcome to AI Anytime channel. So in today's video, we are going to create a text classifier model. So we'll build a toxicity classifier model that will classify text between toxic and non-toxic. We'll take the data from Kaggle and we'll perform some NLP operations and then we'll use a supervised machine learning algorithm to you know, create this model, which will be a binary, classific binary classifier. So we are going to create a binary classification model here and we'll use classical machine learning algorithms to create the model. So let's see uh, which data that we are going to take. So if you see, I'm on Kaggle right now and we'll take this toxic tweets data set, okay, which says a balanced data set of tweets containing hate speech and offensive languages. We will take this data set and we'll create the model, then we'll dump that model. We'll serialize that model so we can use that model in our applications or for the other use cases that we have. The, as this data has been you know, downloaded or scrapped from Twitter, basically these are tweets, but at, in end, these are all text data. This can be used, the model that we are going to train can be used or leveraged in other tasks. Like you know, if we have uh, reviews and feedback, right? If you see on Amazon or any other website, where, where the, these companies provide products and services and their offerings. People kind of comment and sometimes they also comment, a lot of, they also abuse and you know comment, uh, toxic uh, comment there. Okay, these are not appropriate comments that they make you know on, on this e-commerce sites or even on different applications or products that we are providing. Same happens on YouTube. YouTube has a feature which says, you know, if, if, you, if the content creator wants, they can, you know, delete some uh, or they can held some uh, comment okay, from the subscriber or even the unsubscriber. Okay. So YouTube use this kind of you know, technology where they find out and they filter out. Okay. Most of them are uh, non-toxic, but few of them are toxic. And if the content creator wants, they can uh, you know, held that comment and they can not publish that comment. Okay. So this, this kind of models can be used there you know, to solve this kind of problems that we face. Okay, and that we have even we will build this we can build this as an API and we can use this in our application and offerings. Okay, so this is the data set. If you come down, uh, you'll find a metadata also and it has around uh, 50,000 plus rows. Uh, it's a very balanced data and a good one to work along with. And it says label. We have a label here toxicity indicating whether our tweet is toxic or not. Okay. So let's uh, do this guys. So what I will do, I already have downloaded the data in my uh, machine and what I'll do, I'll use Google Colab. Let me upload the data. I will upload it in the runtime. So I'll, I'm not, uh, I'm not mounting it. Okay. I'll just upload it. Uh, and we can also mount it to drive. You can also, you know, download this data directly yeah, using WGate or you can also save it on your drive and you can mount your collab with the drive and you can just download it from there okay i just uploaded it in the in the runtime but make sure if you upload in the runtime if your session is uh, closed uh, you will lose all this uh, data and your uh, models if you save that model okay so now what we'll do we'll import let me just import few other packages Import panda that pd numpy np import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt matplotlib dot inline just because you can visualize that uh, inside this notebook. So this is uh, going to be the Few of the imports that you see that 90% of the machine learning models you know, kind of you know involve these libraries, these three of the libraries, and the panda is decent for you know this amount of data that we have. If you have big data, you, know, you can use other tools or libraries like PySpark, or you can use Dark and you know Vex and a lot of other libraries that we can use. Okay, so now what I what I have to do now to import this data. So what I'll do, I'll say data and let me quickly load this with pandas, which is final balance, excuse me, data set 
dot csv this is going to be my data and let's info about the data so you can see we have a it looks like we have an extra column so let me just do a head and see few of the rows and you can see i we have to drop this unnamed maybe we would have done index call equal to zero so might have dropped that so let me just do this so unnamed zero do not need this and x is equal to one and now data dot head So you can see we have around 56,745 entries and now you can see so we have toxicity column which is the label and we have tweet now let's do one thing we we can also let's find out how many of them are toxic and non-toxic value counts toxicity you can see one being non-toxic and zero means uh, now one means toxic and zero means non-toxic. So we have around 24,000 of rows which contain some kind of you know toxic content. Okay. So now what we will do guys, we need, uh, if you see this data, this is not clean. You can see at the rate user, when a father is you know, as functional and all. Okay. So we have at the rate, we have hash, we have colon here. We have to clean this data. We also have to lemmatize the data. Now we, a question will come, what is, what do we mean by lemmatize and lemmatization? I will explain that you now in a very layman term. What is lemmatization? Now, what we are going to do first, we have to first import this NLTK. We have to work with natural language toolkit. It provides some part of the speech tagger, the POS tagger. It provides some lemmatizer modules. It provides you a lot of other different modules where we we can work with it. So, what I'm going to do now, okay, I I have a, have a function maybe. So, let me go to my gist. I have all my NLTK imports here. I'll just copy this. I'm going to write it. These are, you might have seen it earlier also if you have worked with natural language toolkit. Okay, if you see this, we are importing natural language tool, toolkit. You do not have to install NLTK in Google Colab, guys, because it comes pre installed. Uh, import NLTK, and uh, but if you are creating a virtual environment in your machine offline or locally, you have to install this. These, these are all required uh, dependencies. These are all POS tagger. We have average perceptron tagger. We have, you know, stopwatch. I think average perceptron tagger has been trained on, you know, walls journal data, the text data. Okay, these are all POS tagger, OMW 1.4, all the data that we are. And then we are also getting lemmatizer now. Now, what do you mean by lemmatizer, guys? So let me let me just write it lemmatizer here. Lemma. So lemma means basically, if you go in search in the dictionary, lemma means the word which has a dictionary meaning. Okay, a dictionary meaning. So now let's for example let's understand like this we have leaves and then we have leaf these two right now you know we can group them okay and this can have a single dictionary meaning okay we can create a lemma out of it or the lemma will be nothing but the leaf this is your lemma right this is so basically here we are creating uh what we'll do we'll have this text data okay first we have to clean it once we clean it we'll uh Limitize those texts to find out the most uh, value which are having dictionary values. Okay, the text which will have dictionary values and the multiple words can be you know bind in the same group and they can have a same value there also. That's what we mean by limitization, guys. A very layman term. We have leaves and we have le leaves and leaves, but the dictionary value can be leaf. Okay, so we have to lim limitize this. You know, a lot of if you see examples, okay. Uh, SEO, the search engine optimization, is a prime example where you know this this is this is being used on the vast extent. Okay, so let me just comment it out. Okay, so what we have to do now? We have to we have imported all this natural language toolkit libraries and dependencies. What we are going to do? We are going to uh, create a variable where we'll initiate this constructor or method. So I'll call it word net lemmatizer equal. And you see we have imported this word net lemmatizer here. We just have to uh, initiate the method so one net limitizer okay we just doing this one well, limit not defined i think i haven't run yet okay maybe okay yes sorry 
and now one red limit either has been done okay now what we have to do we have to clean this text right okay and most of the time when you work with text data you will have messy data you will have uh, uncleaned or raw data and you have to have a function okay that kind of you know helps you clean those data that can be with regular expressions and that can be with the POA stagger we have to lemmatize it and then split and join it so what I have done if you see I, these are all my gist I'll give the this gist link in the description as well I have several functions that I have created and I use these functions on my day-to-day -day work activities that can be you know working with text data when I am working with tabular data then I have some other code snippets ready which I keep it handy so I, this this helps to increase the productivity when I am working okay so what I'm going to do now I'm just going to copy this I'll explain this so if you see what we are doing we have a function here which kind of first uh, we are looking at the POA stagger if which finding out that okay we have adjective we have verb we have noun if we have adverb return it if we don't then just return the noun and then what we are doing we are using regular expression I think we have to import it you can see I'm getting a warning here so what I will do I'll just say import re which means regular expressions and yes you can see now it has been removed and yes so you see we have this uh, if you see at the rate hash colon and the next line and the other things we are handling these things with regular expressions a to z and finding out all those special characters and then we have uh, we are tokenizing it and we are using this lemma here right the lemmatizer See, this is a variable wordnet lemmatizer and I'm using lemmatize and I'm just passing it this on uh, get wordnet pause and that's returning the lemma. So lemma is basically the you know, very lemon term terms is like a dictionary value or a dictionary meaning. Okay, so return lemma. So this is my function. Now what we have to do guys, we have to apply this function. So let's apply this function. So now on this tweet, we have to create a new column where our clean a clean tweet uh, will be there like we have to store such store it somewhere right so we'll create a new column guys here so what I'm going to do now I'm going to call data and I'm going to call it clean tweet clean tweets let's call it clean tweet and what I'm going to do now I'm going to use that column tweet uh, excuse me there and I'll apply my function that I've created above apply I'll use lambda x and here I'm what was my function name excuse me what was prepare text prepare text and I'll just pass that x that I have signed with lambda I think this should do it will take little time guys because we have around 50,000 odd rows and it's not a small data to work with it's a very decent data and it will take little time because it has to go through the in all of the rows then you have to perform the this function uh, prepare text and then it has to again create a new column and then join it and then you know create a this data frame so let's wait for it so what we are going to do now is that okay let me even write data dot head till we get this once once we lemmatize the text We'll have a clean text and the reason we are doing this clean text is because we have to uh, create the feature okay create the feature set where we can train our model right uh, on that features that we'll create and for feature creation we'll use tf idf okay that we will also import it i'll just show it in a bit let me write okay now let me do data dot head five i think it has done and now if you see we have clean tweets and you see the tweet now you can see right user when a father and then you had at the rate everything has been cleaned right you see this um, has was there has is not there model i love you take with you all the time in your and then facts guide society now motivation right so we have cleaned our tweets now now what we will do we'll use this tweet we'll, we have to use this clean tweets column and we have to then use the tf idf and all so let's see how we can do it then for that we have to uh, import our sklearn scikit-learn packages so from sklearn dot feature extraction dot text and then we'll import the tf idf 
excuse me tf idf vectorizer okay this is the first thing that we have to load we also have to load from sklearn dot uh, model selection sklearn dot model selection and we have to get the train test split because we have to create that training and test data split and we need some of the evaluation metric guys so what i'm going to do now uh, from okay let's first load the model so we will use a uh, nav base here uh, to create this binary classifier uh, of toxicity and non toxicity on top of text it works nav base works very good on the text data guys when you have to build text classifier you can also try some other models so for today's video we'll use a nav base multinomial nav base model that i will be showing you that how we are going to create that model so from sklearn dot uh, nav base and we'll import excuse me import multinomial nav now we have imported the model now what we have to do we have to import uh, the metric so we'll we'll import some metrics Okay, so first is sklearn dot metrics and then import uh, roc curve roc curve and roc a score that's good so from sklearn dot metrics let's import roc a score and then tuc score or roc curve sorry okay so we're done with the imports guys now what we'll do we'll write our uh, uh, code to create the tf idf on this clean tweets so let me first uh, create a variable which will what we'll do it will have uh, my data of clean tweets let me charge the monitor just give me a minute plug in What I'm going to do, guys, now we will have defined this corpus. So let me define this corpus and corpus equal to data, and then we'll have this clean tweets. Excuse me, this clean tweets dot values and dot as type because it might have been in we haven't seen this to as type. Let u type as u corpus. And now the stop words. Uh, what I'm going to do the stop words now is that we have to set the uh, that okay need the English because we have English text only, right? We do not have any other languages here. So NLTK stop words dot word, and we'll use only English, and we'll use this stop words in the function when we are creating this TF IDF. Okay, so. Let's do this stop words. And now what I'm doing, I'm then doing count tf idf. Count tf idf equal to tf idf and vectorizer yes, and then passing the stop words stop underscore words equals, and then we have this stop words. So here we have this define. Now let's we have to do a fit transform guys so with this on this count uh, tf idf variable where we have this uh, method tf idf what i'm going to do count tf yes then we have to fit transform fit transform and then we have to pass this corpus that's it count tf idf this should do and this will take a uh, little time when we are you know uh, are dumping it so what we'll do guys we'll we'll dump this we'll save this uh, tf idf that we have created because when we do not want to run this every time when you are doing a testing or when you are inferencing it or when you are you know integrating this somewhere okay so this model development is a very small part this can be a very small part of your entire end to end uh, solution that you are building okay so when you are testing it or when you are creating an api or integrating this in an application Every time a new input has been, you know, searched or has been given by the end user, this will not 
uh, go and create TF, IDF and all these features. Okay, so what you have to do, you have to dump this. So for that, I will use pickle, import pickle. For pickle is a serialization library. We serialize our models with help of pickle or job leave or any other. Uh, there are a lot of other libraries that you can use to serialize your models. So I will use the same. I will say pickle dot dump. I will dump this. And I'll use this count count tf idf and then what I'm going to do now is that I'll use open and here I will just give it a name which is tf idf okay tf idf dot pkt and we have to write it so let's write okay I'm using dumps. There's nothing called dump. Dump. So this is dump. So pickle dot dump count tf idf open tf idf dot pickle. Now let me rephrase this. You can see that my features have been here. Okay. So now if I'm testing it out, once I build the model, I have to test it. I do not have to use this. I can just load this tf idf and then I can just you know pass my input text and then model will be on run on that top on top of that. So this is what we did. Okay, now what we have to do, we have to create the training and testing set to train the model. So, so let's do that. So our first thing will be the TF IDF train and the TF IDF test, TF IDF train and TF IDF test. And then we'll have uh, target train uh, and then we'll have target, target test and what next? Train test split. The module that we have imported from sklearn.model selection and here we have to define all our you know uh, couple of things which is first is where our data is stored the feature that we have created tf idf and then we have the target so target is nothing but our uh, toxicity what was that we have toxicity so this is nothing but the toxicity column you can also you know assign them in a variable called y or something and then we can uh, do it from there so data uh, toxicity and what we have to do now we have to test size so test size equal to let's have 80 percent so 0 0.8 and for reproducibility and shuffle so what is that random uh, random state equals I think 42 and then shuffle equals true so let's data to shuffle and that's it So this is done. So now what we will do, we will create the model. So let me just write, create, a, excuse me, create a binary classification model here. And let me just write it here. So little bit of documentation. So create, I'll just let write TF, uh, TF, IDF features and let me here call it text preprocessing that's it uh, now here what we'll do we'll create a binary classification model guys so what I'm going to do now I'm again uh, we'll first uh, a variable where I have this we'll set this uh, method multinomial NB that's it and now I'll say equals model space dot fit will fit uh, here this tf idf train and target train so tf idf train excuse me tf idf train and target train So now let's do one thing. Okay, we have now let's uh, create a variable. We'll test the, uh, we'll evaluate it. So why print proba, and then we'll what we'll do? We'll have model base. We'll predict on the test data. So what we're going to do first? Model yes, model base dot predict predict probability or proba. Then model base dot predict proba. 
So what we have, we'll pass the TF um, IDF, excuse me, TF IDF test and TF IDF test and then colon colon comma one. I just need to uh, if you run this, you will get an array where you will be list of array where you will see that you will not be able to understand anything right now. So what I will do, uh, let's just first create the uh, false positive rate and true positive rate, okay, TPR and SPR and then here we will test on our input text guys. So SPR and TPR and then what we will do now, we will uh, go and we'll pass this uh, test that we have created target test and wipe rate for bar. So target underscore test and wipe rate for bar variable. Okay, I'll see curve and now final ROC and AUC. Okay, and for that, what we'll use ROC excuse me, not capital, AUC, we have imported this as CSC score and then we we'll pass the target test and the wipe rate proba. Excuse me. And now let's print this. So 96%. So this looks good, a uh, very decent model. Okay, we'll, we'll test it out and then we'll see if it's able to, you know, predict it correctly or classify it correctly. So you can see that we got around final ROC AUC score of 96%. Now what we'll do now, now let's have a sample. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say test, test text. And in test text, I'll just write, it was an amazing, no, uh, amazing experience. So suppose this is my this is my text and I want to uh, test the model on this test text. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to do do test ID or uh, test TF IDF and thus we have to use this TF IDF. We have to do the transform guys. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to this count that variable of the count TF IDF and then transform transform and we have to pass this inside a list which is test text and then let's do test text and tf test uh, underscore tf idf and then let's display so display model based dot predict and we have to predict this just to predict proba and then predict we also get the accuracy of for both the labels so predict proba and then here we'll pass the test uh, tf idf Test TF IDF display excuse me display model base dot only predict and then pass the test TF IDF one will give you the uh, accuracy for uh, both the classes and the, this will give you only the which class that it belongs to the maximum one so let's see that. So you can see uh, this was my input text. It was an amazing experience and it's able to predict or uh, classify very correctly guys. So 90% with the array zero, which means non-toxic. One being the toxic. Now I'll do one thing. I'll just replace this. I'll say I, I hate you moron or something. Okay. And now let's see. Wow. So you can see that when I when I'm writing here I hate you moron as a test text as a sample it's able to classify if this is a, a, a toxic comment okay you can see the value here right the accuracy okay. and here you can see the class array one okay so this is basically the zero and this is the one and is the maximum value of being one so what I need to do now guys is that you know we can also let's save this model okay and then we'll use this model to create an API with the help of fast API and then we'll host that fast API or host that API on rapid API. I'll also show you that how you can create 
uh, and if an uh, machine learning API, right? We call it AI as a service or AI as an API and how you can host that API on rapid API or any other API gateways, right? So now what I'm going to do, um, um, let's write a text here, save the model and we'll again use pickle to save the model. So I'm going to say model base where we have, uh, so not need of that. So what I'm going to do pickle dot dump because we already have imported and we already have the model there. So pickle dot dump and model base and here it will be open again and here we give the model name. So I'm going to call it toxicity model dot pkt and here it will be right. So let me refresh this. So you can see the model here. So let me do one thing. Let me first download this model. Download it on desktop. Let me create. So we'll also create a project folder here for the next video. So let me create it toxicity classific classifier app. And inside this, I'll save this. And let me also download this tf idf.pkt. So do not have to create it again and again. So let me save this. We'll just load this uh, model weights and this TF ID of the feature and then we'll just create a function where this will take an input and in, re in return it will give you the uh, label which is a toxic or non-toxic. Okay. So this is what we did uh, in this video guys. We took this data from Kaggle toxic tweets data set. We used uh, uh, this NLTK natural language toolkit to you know uh, clean the data and lemmatize that data. Once we lemmatize that with WordNet lemmatizer, we you know created the feature with TF IDF. And once we have the feature, we then used a binary classification, uh, like created a binary classification model with help of multinomial uh, NAV base. And we then saved the model. We got a ROC AUC score of 96. You can see, see it over here, right? And then we also tested it. Now we have saved the model. So in next video, what we are going to do, guys, we will take this video. We'll first build a, an API and also we'll build a Streamlit application. We'll deploy that Streamlit application on GitHub, uh, from uh, from GitHub to Sayer Streamlit. And then we'll uh, create that API and we'll host that API in Rapid API, guys. So stay tuned for the next video. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll scale this up and we'll also extend this. We'll, we'll deploy this uh, this uh, model that we have created you know, through an API and also an application. So if you like this video, uh, please like and please uh, subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And please share this channel and this video with your friends and your peers. Thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next, next video, guys. Thanks.